had the worst nightmare. Jesse, are you awake? What happened? I just had a nightmare that I was in a situational comedy. No. A sitcom no. comedy. Adam! Ugh. That's the third time this week. I know. <sighs> I know just we can call. Who are we calling? Shh. Hi. Hi, Jesse. What? Sitcom comedy? Again? Alright, hold on. I know we can talk to. What is it? Uh, Adam's got a problem. He's had another bad dream. Again? Yep. Alright, I can help. He's, he's hysterical again. He says he can't see anything when his eyes are closed. He when he opens he his eyes, he's, he's seeing colors. He said he can't see anything with his eyes closed. <gasps> what? Wait a second. My phone has really bad reception and I'm almost out of data. Do you think we could like... Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, so it's yeah, just really bad. He's gone. I don't know. Hey, buddy. Hey. It was horrible. Just tell, just tell me about it. Wait a second, guys. If we're all here, then who's running the camera? Yeah, um, let's just act like that beginning part didn't happen and we'll get right into it. Welcome to the first episode of Shoein' In. I know what you're thinking, what's Shoein' In? It's dumb. <laughs> Shoein' In is a new thing we're trying out. Um, it's gonna be like a monthly show, maybe monthly, maybe yearly, depending how lazy I am. So what Shoein' In really is, is a little bit of news and a little bit of segments put together by students here on campus. The goal is to inform and also entertain. The news stories that I'm talking about are going to be all linked below. They're written by students for students on the Siena campus. But you can always go to shoespectra.com and keep updated on all of the news stories here on campus. So let's get right into it. So our first story is by Jacob Jingen. Jacob writes about our new director of student engagement, Dexter Overall. Dexter Overall likes Siena Heights. <laughs> Dexter is super excited to be on Santa's campus and has huge ideas for the students here. Dexter lives by the personal motto, be big, be bold, be iconic. Which basically means live like Kanye, maybe, I don't know, shout out Yeezy, shout out Northwest, shout out Kim K, shout out... <laughs> Our next story is written by Sissy Phillips. Sissy writes about the nonprofit organization Build On. Build On hopes to break the cycle of poverty, illiteracy, and low expectations through service and education. Sissy writes about Keegan Paps. Keegan is a senior here at Siena and spent 10 service days working in Nicaragua for Build On. If you want to learn more about Keegan and Sissy's full article, you can click the link below. Our entertainment editor, Jacob Haggerty, wrote about the new movie It. 2017's It is the highest grossing horror movie of all time. Along with raking in a ton of cash, It has also raked in a ton of great reviews. Jacob also thought very highly of the film. To read Jacob's full review of It, click the link below. Our next video segment is going to be about Tuesday trivia. Take it away, Sissy. So Tuesday Trivia is a new event that Spark is hosting. Um, it's basically just a fun night, fun night on a Tuesday, to bring students, friends, your brain, for a night of, of questions. And in the past, this past week, we had random ones. So the categories range from history to Halloween. Um, but in the future, looking ahead, we're looking at doing themed events. So maybe a Disney night or maybe a Harry Potter night. Kind of depends on the, the packs that we find. Uh, Tuesday trivia happens once a month every month and it usually typically happens to be the second week or the third week into, into the month. Prizes range, um, we're doing gift cards so your team can range from one to five people, um, five being the max, one being the least, um, and then we'll have gift cards each week and they'll, they'll range. So this past week we had Morning Fresh, um, but we're, gonna, we're looking to go around like locally in Adrian to do um, businesses that we think that students go to. I was really happy with the first event. I think that we had about 20 people come. Um, we had a couple teams, which was super cool, and a lot of faces that we haven't seen before, so it ended up being a good, good new event that we have. Um, we're hoping that we'll have more people come with each week, but I think it was a good first solid event. I'll have you guys know the first trivia uh, Sienna had, I won. By myself. No, I had a team, but still, it was basically, no, nah, it was a team effort. But, you know, I asked them to go, so, you know, it's whatever. Uh, so I helped write this book, and I'm really narcissistic, so here's a video about it. That was a part of the dedication of the actual mural itself. Two years later, Joni comes to me again, um, asking 
if I would be interested in writing this book. It was really kind of random. Joni just found me in the halls of the art studio and I was complaining about not having money. Joni was like, oh my God, I have a job for you. And uh, a couple weeks later, I started working on it. Anne and I worked on this book. Her, um, you know, organizing each page, me writing each page, and her, we're both collaborating on each, um, deciding what looks good, what looks best. <laughs> it was a very, very tight timeline. I think they only had like two months to pull this book together. The quality is excellent, right? The storyline is great. Uh, and the fact it's in, uh, in a, a printed form that can be shared, right, and reproduced, right, is essential. Joni was talking to me the other day about we might be doing two or three more. So I'm like, okay, okay, I can do this. <laughs> so yeah, I'm still really excited about it. The way that everyone came together for the mural and for the book based on the mural is just really a testament of Adrian's community and community in general and how every piece of this puzzle is important. Every piece of this puzzle is vital to making the puzzle whole. This book is a great representation of that. I'm sure you guys have noticed the construction being done at the PAC. So the next piece is going to be about the due date and the whole process of making this PAC. I'm standing here with our student government president, Arthur. Um, Arthur, how would you say that you feel about this expansion in terms of is it a burden on you? definitely not a burden on me. Uh, it's a great improvement for campus. Uh, we can see that the theater department and the music department are getting a, a great asset to their programs. Ken has been expanding for the past five years. Since I've been here, we got a new building every year. So it's just, I guess it's part of our plan um, to keep expanding and I don't see um, any negative coming from it. Sister Peg uh, raised over nine and a half million dollars so this um, project could happen. So we're very appreciative of her for doing all that work. We had some amazing um, donations and so we also appreciate all those that gave. And now Amy, what do you think was the hardest part about this project in general? Well, I'm not sure about the construction side, but for us it was um, emptying the building, um, emptying classrooms, moving pianos, trying to find storage space for everything, trying to continue having classes um, with limited space. but. People have been very helpful and cooperative, so we've pretty much, we think we have everything set for this semester, but it's a, a bit of a semester by semester project. So we're just starting to do course scheduling for winter semester, and so we'll see where we end up there. Okay. And Amy, do you know the expected date it is supposed to be finished and fully completed? Yes. Um, we started, we, I really didn't do anything, they started in um, March. Um, and it's a two-phase project, so the second phase is supposed to begin February uh, 2018. And then um, the completed project will take place um, by August, so we can open up grand opening August 2018. Now how excited, for our last question, how excited are you and other staff members um, about this entire project? Well, we're very excited, and I think the best part of it for me is when I take an alum, a young alum or a current student before class has started, taking them through on a tour and they just are very excited. Some have commented they wish they graduated later so they could still be taking classes here. The um, seniors and previous students are just extremely excited to see the new facilities finished. Uh, next up, we have a very interesting and artistic piece for you guys. This was created by Austin Burnett and John Buecher, and no, I don't want to really explain it anymore. You guys can go ahead and check it out yourself. Hey everyone, uh, this is my story. <laughs> it all started when I was being squeezed by a nice old man at a party. Stop it, why are you doing this? Please. Uh, <laughs> I feel pretty good in my hands. I'm gonna squeeze you a little bit more. Uh, please don't. Please. Dad, what, what, what's happening? Uh, wait, but Papa. <laughs> Birthday party. My boy is passed out, bro. We sticky, we slimy, 
We hatching from eggs. Please. Help Whoa! Me. So cool! That's my that's my son. I can't really see that much. And getting it all. It just went to the <laughs> to the noises, guys. <laughs> I don't want to do drugs anymore. <laughs> Next up is uh, dumb stuff. We just did dumb stuff. <laughs> Adam, Sheila, Tasha, and myself went and interviewed students on Tiana's campus. Uh, we broke fake news and we did a little switchy roo. Um, and what we got was something. So, Sam Lahuye, what is your favorite part about Sienna? See, my favorite part about Sienna is just like the small knit nature. It's, uh, you know, nice. You know everybody, and it's just easy to get around here. How do you feel about Siena Heights canceling our football team and replacing it with a all-women's golf team? Another one. I think that'd be kind of weird. Uh, I don't really think it would be worth the money and whatnot because football does bring in a lot of money. I mean, hey, I would like their scholarship money, though. Backup quarterbacks make $16,000, and I'm out here being a starter with 3000 So if you wanted the cold, hard facts, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'd like their money, but I don't really think it'd be beneficial. If you could be any type of pasta, would you be spaghetti? No. What's your favorite part about Siena Heights University? We've just gotten news that nudity is allowed on campus. What are your feelings about this? Cool. Where that God made you. All students aren't allowed to be showing like knees or anything. It's feel like distraction. Uh, what's like your feelings towards that? I mean, it's hot. So um, I mean, if it if it if it is implemented and we have to do it, I mean, we just have to abide by the rules and have to just suck it up. Everybody acts around people. One second, we just got breaking news. Starting next year, parking permits are going to be five hundred dollars. What are you That's not okay. I don't even pay for the $100. <laughs> I have never paid for any of my parking passes. There's also word that they're actually going to be implementing the towing. That you have to pay for that. That's fine. It's only $50. I'd rather pay $50 for towing than $100 for my parking pass. That is logical. Thank you so much. I forgot her name. Okay, wow. And what do you study? Um, I'm back getting my teaching certification. I want to be a high school biology teacher. Right. So, are you living on campus? Anyways, have you ever felt the need to lie about your shoe size? No, never. Very confident. Very confident. Hello, I'm back. I love Adam Brooks. Hello, it's me, Adam Brooks. I heard. So do you find with that kind of major, do you have a heavy or light course load, depending on what days of the week? So how do you like the UC food right now? This is a social experiment, isn't it? <laughs> Bull crap. <laughs> um... Because you guys just switched. What? Uh, <laughs> this is <a> social. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what that meant. This is social. So what happened is like they had like 10 rats, but they all escaped and then they started mating and stuff. Yeah, now they've caught around 20, but there's about 100 at least left. Well, I've, I've never seen any, so. What would you rather come to face to face with, a raccoon or a, a rat? A rat? I stumped that mm. out. What about a rat the size of a raccoon? I don't know what to do with that. I'd probably run. 
because honestly, like, I didn't want to say that because it's kind of a scare, but that's what the size of these rats are. No, no, so it'd be like... Yeah, I've seen a raccoon. That's big. It's been a pleasure, Adam. You too, Sam. <laughs> Zoom in on the handshake when you upload it. <laughs> yeah, I told you it was something. Next up, we're going to give updates on all the sports records up to this point. Sports. 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 All right, next up we have Zach's Countdown, a segment that's going to hopefully appear every time. Hopefully not. I don't know. <laughs> Take it away, Zach. Hi, I'm Zach Simon. Welcome to Zach's Countdown, the show where I, Zach, count things down. Today, we're doing the top five drinking fountains on campus. Mumbo number five. <laughs> I'm here with number five, right near the entrance of Studio Angelico. It's got a nice modern appearance, cool, refreshing water, and it's equipped with its very own water bottle filler. Number four on our list is an absolute classic. Located in the first floor of Ledwidge Hall, it's one of the most used drinking fountains on campus. It has this dark atmosphere that leads to a truly romantic experience. That is good! Number three on my list is on the third floor of Ludwig, outside of room 395. It's pretty good. Mumbo number two. <laughs> number two on my list is this one, right here, in St. Joseph Hall, across from room number 109. It's got a delightful, cold, crisp taste that I love, and it comes equipped with its own bottle filler, another great feature. But best of all, there's another one right next to it. Mumbo number one. Number one on our list is directly outside of room number 253. It has a delicious cold flavor that you can't find elsewhere. A beautiful metallic exterior, unlike any other. Incredible water pressure, delivering exactly what you want. I'm Zach Simon, and those are my top five drinking fountains on campus. Catch you next time on Zach's Countdown. If you guys have any suggestions or maybe an uh, idea for a segment you want to put in the show, I'll put my email in the description also. Well, that's going to do it for shooing in. Until next time, stay sainty. Ooh, that was, I didn't like that. All right, that's going to do it. Until next time, keep it class. Until next time, halo it up. And remember, Sienna will always take you to new heights. Wow.